because he's out to get you somehow. The idea is not to always be on the defense, but to be on the offense. Don't come near my stuff. Don't come near my family. Don't come near my finances. Don't come near my mind. Satan, the blood of Jesus comes against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus comes against you. I'm shrink wrapped in the blood. Must have agonized and grieved to watch his child suffer and bleed. But he knew the blood that his son spilt there would save the world from her despair. So that 2,000 years ago, God put his power in the flow and the sea.
on the offense. Don't come near my stuff. Don't come near my family. Don't come near my finances. Don't come near my mind. Satan, the blood of Jesus comes against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus comes against you. I'm shrink wrapped in the blood. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. I am totally enveloped in the blood of Jesus Christ somebody hearing me that's why this table is here because skilled warriors must know what they are entitled to last week I gave you out the forms the target forms how many of you have them this morning you've got to focus on being a skilled warrior don't be distracted by people who call you and tell you it's not going to happen why don't you give up why don't you take plan B How many know that God has no plan B? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, did you hear what she said? No plan B for me. Plan A, success, divine health, prosperity. Come on, reconciliation. You want some of that? You can take it today in Jesus' name. We said that In order to be a skilled warrior, we understood that we must decide to engage in the proper preparation. How many know that nothing just happens? You have a sloppy walk with God, guess what? You're going to be behind as we are progressing through. You've got to engage in success. Create a time and place. Remember we said that. Psalm 63, 1 says, early will I seek thee. Proverbs 8, 17, those who seek me early shall find me. How many remember that? We said daily to sow the word in your heart. Don't let a 24-hour period go by. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Have I vaulted? I'm keeping it here. Because as sure as you're sitting there, you're going to need to call on that word somehow during the day. How many know that? The phone rings. You meet somebody in public. Somebody taps you on the shoulder. 
you get a letter, you got to write, what does it say? Give people the word. If you don't have the word, you can't give the word. Amen? Amen. Don't give people the Greek and the Hebrew. Give them what's in your heart. Once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was sick, but now I'm well. Once I didn't know where the next dollar was coming in. But Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. How many have had the provision of Jehovah Jireh? He is our provider. He is our provider. He is our provider. We said envelop yourself in the atmosphere of praise and worship. And you know, silence is valid also. I mean, sometimes you just don't want to hear music. You just want to hear the hush of his presence. Sometimes you just need to have the world shut up. I need to be in the presence of the king. Pray in the Holy Spirit. He doesn't know. Now listen, when we pray with understanding and we're, you know, reminding the Lord of, of, of Johnny and Mary and we're reminding of the Lord that we've got a deadline on Tuesday and we're reminding the Lord as if God doesn't really even know. And we remind her, God, don't forget me now. Don't forget now. I have to get, and you know, God, uh, and the enemy listens because it's understanding. He goes before the Father and he says, huh, you're going to give that one a, you know what she is? You know what she's done? You know, the accuser of the brethren. But he cannot bring back a report of Sokoreman Desta Bashata. Oh, Mandeli, I'm under the radar. I'm interceding for something. I know what I'm interceding for. God knows what I'm interceding for. But the devil doesn't. He don't have a clue. I'm under the radar. That's why it's so important you become a man and a woman of the spirit. Because the spirit knows what to break through. The spirit knows. And all of a sudden you start feeling it in your knower. You say, yeah, that prayer got through. I know. Oh, my hair is standing up. Oh, I feel the glory. Whether you feel it or not, it got through. Somebody hear me. Somebody say amen to that. You must not lose focus. You must be devoted to hitting that target every time. And once you hit the first target, next target comes piece of cake. Third one didn't take as long. Precision. You will pray with precision and things will happen. Pastor Maribel said to me, someone had quoted to her that they were praying to, to uh, uh, become pregnant a few months ago. And I prayed on them and they're pregnant. Come on now, don't touch me. Some of you ladies are saying, don't come near me, honey. Because that is precision. It didn't happen to me overnight. It came through aiming and pulling the bow. All right, I got close that time. Well, it took a little longer. But you get to the point where you have precision prayer. How many want precision prayer? How many don't want to waste time Praying over and over and over. Precision prayer means aim, fire, got it. Today, as, as you can see, I want to present to you another part of your, your skill, and that is knowing and recognizing how to apply the blood of Jesus. Okay, the blood. Oh, when I say it, my hair stands up. The blood of Jesus. It's ours. Oh, it's ours. It's our empowerment. It's our force. The blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews 9. Such good history. Hebrews 9, verse 19 and 20 in the Amplified. For when Every command of the law had been read out by Moses to all the people. He took the blood of slain calves and goats together with water and scarlet wool and with a bunch of hyssop and sprinkled both the book. That was the role of the law and covenant itself and all the people. Saying these words, 
this blood, this is the blood that seals and ratifies the agreement, the testament, the covenant which God commanded me to deliver to you. Back then, that's exactly what was going on. It was the, the blood of calves and, and sheep and animals that ratified an agreement. Is somebody hearing me? Now, that was the Old Testament. But now today, we have the New Testament, which is the New Covenant. A better way. Somebody say a better way. A living way. We don't have to sprinkle the blood of animals on this book. We don't have to do it as Moses did it to ratify. It's been ratified through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has activated every promise in the word has been activated because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. We must understand the importance, the vital importance of the blood of Jesus Christ in our daily life. Some of you are living in lesser lifestyles because you don't understand all that you're entitled to. Declaring the blood of Jesus is a statement that gives you immediate, immediate breakthrough. Blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus comes against you. There isn't any more argument because it's deemed done, finished. It's the past. The Bible is a book about the blood from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis 4.10, we know the story about Abel's blood crying out to God from the ground. What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. See, blood is living. It's alive. No matter how you twist or turn, the blood has got, when your blood is sick, your body is sick. You hear me? Good blood produces good life. Is somebody hearing me? You're equipped to live a healthy, good life. And so that blood that went into the ground, God said, I hear something. It's crying out to me. I'm listening. Something went on here, Cain. Your brother's blood is crying out from the ground. It cannot be silenced. In Revelation 19, 13. Oh, what a scripture. It's a description. Revelation is totally Jesus anyway. No matter how many people want to give their own interpretation of who's coming, what's not happening. It's all about Jesus on the Isle of Patmos after being boiled, come on, in hot oil. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it describes him. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called, his name is called, Always the blood, always the blood, the blood representing life, life. Why? Why? Because there's new life in the blood. There's new hope in the blood. You, you make a mistake and we're all mistake makers. I'd be the cheapest one. In our repentance, we say, now wash me with his, I mean, wash me in the blood. It's a cleansing agent that not only cleanses, but it brings new revitalization to your spirit. Somebody say amen. New life comes from the blood. That's why it's so important sometimes in, in desperate situations in hospitals, when they see that the blood is just so low, that the life is ebbing away, what do they do? They transfuse you with new blood because you need new life. Is somebody catching this tonight, this morning? Okay. Leviticus 17, 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. 
and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. No other way. You don't have to beat yourself up. You don't have to knock yourself out. Jesus, wash me in the blood. I've made a mistake here, Lord. I recognize my mistake. See, denial does not bring cleansing. You got to speak the truth to God. He knows it anyway. Get it over with. Forgive me, Lord. I just had such anger. Oh, I just had an attitude towards her. And I, oh, forgive me. Wash me. It's a cleansing agent. Somebody say a cleansing agent. What is so special about the blood of Jesus? It was the agent that you and I were purchased with. The blood of Jesus Christ. It brought me into salvation. The shedding of the blood. 1 Corinthians 7, 23 says, You were bought with a price. Purchased with a precious, precious price. It was paid for by Jesus Christ. You must apply yourself in the new life. And stop being slaves. Now there are some folks in this room that are slaves to addictive behaviors. And you might look so pretty today, but you and you alone know what calls to you. Anything that you cannot control is controlling you. Is somebody hearing me? Anything that you cannot control is controlling you, and you are a slave to it. Now, some of us, we go into Costco or Sam's, and we buy the giant bottle of Advil. A leave. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Because you're in pain. And you don't want to be in pain. So what happens is you want to make sure that you're not in pain. So from going to two every four hours, now you get the ones that are 24-hour Advil and leaves. And you take two in the morning, but you don't wait till the next morning. You take two at night. And that's not working because the pain is coming back. So you take two more. And it, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And innocently, you're seduced into living on painkillers. And then those Advils and those leaves are not working. So you go to Dr. Jones and you say, I'm taking the Aleve. I'm taking the Advil, but my pain is still there. And you have a valid pain. So then he gives you a little prescription. And you get that prescription filled. And you don't let go of the Aleve in the Advil. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Now what can wipe away that addiction? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Do you believe in that? You believe more in Advil than you do the blood of Jesus. You do. I'm telling you, there is power in the blood. Good to see you, Angie. Power in the blood. I know I'm a product of the blood of Jesus Christ. Came into my veins, healed my body. Over 10 years ago, it healed my mind. It, I, I was trained. I lost my mind. What an expensive thing to lose. I couldn't think. But I remembered one thing that none had told me. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead. I'd walk around and say, blood of Jesus. 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 See, once it got into my mind, my mind began to be transformed. There's power in the blood. There's, have you applied it lately? Have you transfused with the blood of Jesus lately? It's part of you being skilled. Knowledge is power. Applied knowledge is imperative. Now, why is Satan afraid of the blood? Because the plan he had to kill and annihilate Jesus exploded in his face because he said, 
we're going to beat them up so bad. Demons, we're going to humiliate them. We're going to spit on them. We're going to pull his beard out in front of everyone. We'll make a public display of him. We'll tie him to the post. Tell me you remember from the Passion, the most horrific scene of 39 stripes. 39 stripes to try to kill him there. Blood. Somebody say blood. Somebody say blood. Crown of thorns on that precious head. Thorns this long in his head. Pounded them in. Blood pouring from his brow. Blood. Somebody say blood. Say the word. Say it again. Soaked his head, matted in his hair. His hands. He gave them his hands. There was no tugging and pulling. And the devil really thought he had him. More blood pouring out of those hands. Why the crown of thorns? The pain in his head? That you would have wisdom. He took it on his head. That you would have strategies and schemes from another world. The blood of Jesus on my head. My head, my head, my hands, these hands are healing hands. Same power that was in Jesus is in my hands. How about your hands? Look at your hands. What have you been doing with your hands? Have you been working with these hands? Or have these been hands of abuse? Ah uh...